uh, a, a, a fundamental, wonderful part of the plan. But if you've studied the plan, as I have done, you will see there are some very good provisions. There are some very bad provisions. And there are some provisions that have unintended consequences. And what we have to do in Delaware is take what we have statewide Hold for a second. and combine it with the best of the health care plan, the Affordable Health Care Act, and try and remove those sections that would adversely affect the people of the state. Okay. Hey, hey Kev, also, could you put up, um, I think people are going to be trying to follow this on Facebook, and because they're going to go to um, follow it on Facebook and also to um, YouTube, so they might want to flash that up there. All right, welcome to the show. How you doing? Yes, thank you. Uh, just got a quick question for you. Is there any way that the uh, insurance commissioner's office can require some type of database uh, when people take out life insurance or, or different various insurance so that people will be aware of that information or have a central location where they can locate that? Yeah. Is that something that the insurance commissioner's office could do or implement? Well, any or you guys can, anybody can answer that well, question. Well, right now there is a medical information bureau. Uh, when anybody applies for a life insurance policy, uh, that data is already saved. So if it needs to be accessed again, it is, it is already there. It's called a Medical and, Information Bureau. And you guys, you might want to say who you are when you answer the question so the viewing audience can know who you are. Just a little political help here. Uh, this is Mitch Crane. The one problem that I saw when I was handling consumer services was that these life insurance companies often change names as they merge. So people, someone passes away and the heirs find this policy and the company doesn't exist. Having a database would be an excellent way of keeping track of these mergers, acquisitions, and name changes so that we can help people find out how to turn in these policies. And I think it's a good start. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Yes, good evening, uh, Norman. Good evening to your guests. Um, I just want to say that for the last uh, 12 years, as you uh, know, and everybody on your panel knows, um, Dr. Floyd McDowell and 32 statewide organizations have supported single payer. Now, six years ago, Karen was working out of uh, Senator McDowell's office to push the single payer bill and did a lousy job. When she ran for office, she half-heartedly supported it. Now, John Kowalko, Earl Jakes have a bill right now for single payer. And uh, I want to ask this question. How many of you running for this office will support the real cost-effective health insurance plan for this state covering everybody cost-effectively, equally, and justly? Can, can we let them answer the question? You guys, can, can we keep it to a minimum? Single, single payer is uh, an excellent system but Delaware is not ready for it at this time. It's not ready because of the other complexities already introduced into the system, which include how do we digest the Affordable Care Act. Uh, if you look at the example of Massachusetts, which has moved to that system, it has taken them a good six years to get to a point where they have a single-payer system. So the first priority is making sure every Delawarean has some form of health care coverage. Paul? Uh, this is Paul Gallagher. I've, I've read the bill and uh, I'm full support of it. Anything that can be put on the table and lower costs all the way around, which I think this bill can, is excellent. And like I said earlier, anything that doesn't work can always be changed later. Okay. Okay. Um, Liz, as you know, when I worked on the bill, I had 22 sponsors on that bill, which is more sponsors than has ever been on that bill, and I even had Republicans on it. So I would take, um, I'm not sure that was exactly a lousy job since they've never had that many sponsors on it. The bill that was introduced recently is an old bill and I feel that we need to update the information, we need actuarial data, we need a study group, and we really need to study the question as to how it would be implemented. Right now we do have a federal mandate on the books uh, through the portable um, health care and we need to um, abide by the federal mandate, but we, that doesn't mean that we can't form a group to study and get real numbers and real facts and update the bill. Because when, when Dennis Williams and Senator McDowell introduced the bill, it was first in the House with Dennis and then in the Senate with McDowell, it does need updating. And Floyd McDowell wrote the legislation many, many years ago. It wasn't something that's been written within the last year or two. Yes. 
actually, actually oh, 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 let me let this guy th jump th in. This is Mitch Crane. Let me fi let me answer a question, uh, please. Um, Representative Kowalko, the prime sponsor, Earl Jakes and Ed Azinski, the other two sponsors, have all endorsed me. I worked with the three of them before this bill was filed. The purpose of filing the bill was to begin a dialogue. I am 100% in support of single-payer health care as the inevitable way of providing health insurance to the people of this country as so many industrialized countries all over Western Europe and even in Central America already do. Okay. Um, Liz, did you want to say one more thing? I got to yeah, move on. I want to say one more thing for clarification. Massachusetts does not have a single-payer bill. The bill that does have, the state that does have it is Vermont. And actually, the Affordable Care Act leaves state wide open to, in, to have their own single-payer bill as long as it matches what is in the Affordable Care Bill. We have every right to do it right now. Do it, do it the first time out of the gate. We don't need all this... Uh, nonsense that you're all talking about captive markets this that it's confusing people it's medicare for all let's do it let's follow thank the you. vermont sample thank you very much the, the vermont bill has been enacted uh, you know, it doesn't take to, a place in welcome 2013 to the show. Welcome to uh, yeah, yes i would just like to say i hope the panel is very grateful uh for the health care affordable act that was just passed um, because of the fact that the states cannot do everything. If the states thought that they could do everything or knew that they could do everything, they would have came up with this before the federal government did. So be very grateful that this has taken place. It helps children with pre-existing conditions not be discriminated against. There are several very, very factors in this, and we need this as a country. Thank okay? you. You've got a lot of people and the federal government knows exactly what they're doing. They have some of the best attorneys that there is, okay, before they would have did this. And this was passed by the Supreme Court. All right, thank you very much. All right, the, the All one thing that one has... Well, hold on. Right, hold on. You gonna, yeah, go ahead. Right. One I thing that has to. Oh, oh, I think she made a comment. She didn't really ask the question. Go ahead. Right. Um, this guy has a question. Go ahead. Well, can, yeah, the, 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 can I just question, can we just I take her comment a second? Seventy thousand dollars a month from the insurance commission. So what did you say? Excuse me. I'm. I was questioning. Is somebody actually being paid seventy thousand dollars a month from the insurance commission in the state of Delaware? Seventeen. Absolutely not. Seventeen thousand by contract. It's seventeen thousand a month. Yes. Yeah, someone with a master's in 70, finance 000. and a law degree, a doctorate in law. Okay. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Now, you want to chime in? Yes. Uh, as, as everyone has said, the Affordable Care Act is a great start. Uh, but we did not have a lot of the people on the ground, the nurses, the doctors, uh, other health care providers, really provide as much input as they had. And I want to just remind the listener that you always have to be suspicious of any bill that's passed where the next act by the same legislature is to exempt themselves from that bill. Did anybody else want to chime in on that? Well, I thought you made a really good comment, and that's why you know we're working on the exchanges. That's our next big item to implement, and Delaware is going with a joint venture with the federal government and, and the state and the insurance department and uh, Rita Landgraf's office um, health and social services in Delaware will be dividing up what the state is going to be doing and we've been setting a timeline so we can meet the deadline and we've been meeting weekly um, a, as we've been meeting with the federal government on writing the regs for the let me, let me implementation. Ask you, let me, Karen, let me ask you a question and I'm going to ask these guys a question too. Do you, what is your real problem with any of these guys running against you and what's your problem with her or what's your problem with any of these people running? I mean, do you guys, or, or, and also would you endorse them or would you support them if they won? You understand my point? Do you, I mean, do you, who do you want to start with? You can start, we'll start with you, you right here too. I have no personal problems with any of these people. They're, I respect each one of them. Uh, they have unique qualifications. I do not agree with the current administration's record or philosophy, and therefore I think that I'd be a better candidate and a better commissioner. Mm -hmm. Any one of these people would be more qualified than the Republican candidate, and if I should lose the primary, then I'll support whoever wins it. Okay, that's fine. Well, I'm sorry that Mr. Crane doesn't believe with my philosophy that the consumer <laughs> comes first because we are all about the consumer at the insurance department, and time after time we have proven how we work around the consumer and the enhancements we've done to consumer services and the quality of employees we brought into the department surely does show that consumers come first 
So I'm very sad to understand that he does not believe in that hmm. um, philosophy because that is our main philosophy and it's our main um, mission. I have absolutely no problem with any of <laughs> these gentlemen, these fine gentlemen that are running for office, and I would be but very I think that's proud funny. to I support think that's any funny. of them. You can go, but you said the man won't put the consumer first. <laughs> that's kind of a little. Go ahead. Well, Norm, I, I will say that uh, all four of us up here do put the consumer first, yeah. okay. and that's that's been stated the whole campaign. And uh, and I, I believe the, re the again, what I say is I believe that. Uh, what I've witnessed in the last five years in my business, I'm a full-time insurance agent. I've been doing that 36 years. I just have seen the companies in this state seem to have a free hand to do whatever they want. I mean, we, like I said earlier, we got 15 carriers writing auto insurance in this state. That's we used but, to but, have. But 50. where does the buck stop? What, I mean, does the buck stop? With the commissioner? Yes. The so you do have a problem. I mean, it, come on. I mean, you, that's, I that mean, is, everybody's that's probably like the main problem I have. If we lose any more companies that are writing auto and homeowners insurance, we're going to have higher rates yet. The rates will just continue to climb because there's less competition. As Mr. Crane said, we have two companies writing mobile home insurance down in Sussex County. We used to have 25. Wow. Well, I'm not counting surplus and excess six. lines companies. I'm no, not counting the surplus lines companies. Riders. I beg to differ Time, on that. Met, State Farm. American Home. State Farm doesn't write new policies, for one. Hmm. Did you want to join in on this um, crossfire here? Well, I just wanted to say I don't think there's anybody who's been up and down the state for the last 36 years other than myself. I've done it uh, working with clients, small businesses, my, my and question, individuals. My, Dennis, Dennis, I understand. But do, but, do you but, agree with everyone on, on the panel? No, I do not agree with okay. everyone on the panel. I would, ha in terms of support, though, I would have to see where they're coming from. I think, while I respect Mitch and the Secretary, I think they simplified the problem too much. Hmm. You can't always just say yes, or you can't just say no when you say the rate increases. Uh, they're just one factor. I mean, pretty soon we're going to have a situation where we have an insurance company by a hospital or a hospital by an insurance company. That's going to just be a further step wow. towards consolidation. And what I'm saying is you need somebody with a broad enough view of the future. You have to see the tree, you have to see the forest, not just the trees, in order to try and address the problems and the issues that the next insurance commissioner, and because it's an elected position, it has a higher status among other insurance commissioners in the country. So I believe the next insurance commissioner is going to have a huge say on health care policy. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Yeah, Herman, a great show. I'm a senior Herman, citizen. Herman, he came on at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, He Norman. got Plus, he has more hair than me. <laughs> Norman, I'm sorry. <laughs> he, has like, he has that pretty hair, man. I ain't got no hair. <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, it's a great show, and I want to talk in reference to the auto insurance because I just got a renewal, and I renew every year, and somehow they keep sending a letter along with the renewal saying that, um, oh, you can get a lower premium if we check your credit. Well, first of all, once they hit your credit, it lowers your score, and I have an excellent record, no accidents or anything, so something needs to be done about this. Delaware really needs to look at these insurance companies because it should be on your auto record and not on your credit. Hold on for one second. We've got to answer the questions quicker. We this just, is, we're just